Respects to the Sangha. Brothers and sisters, um, today is a great day indeed. Um, we, in particular, would like to express our deepest uh, gratitude to members of the Sangha and in particular Ajahn Somedo for uh, spending this morning with us. Um, we also are greatly indebted to a lot of 
uh, friends of the Dharma who have supported uh, both in terms of uh, finances as well as uh, in kind and in voluntary work in uh, making today possible. And we want to also uh, express our gratitude to all of the members of the Sangha who have traveled great distances to be with us. And so uh, to close this morning's uh, session, uh, let us show our deepest gratitude and appreciation uh, with uh, three sadhus. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So this is another uh, opportunity to reflect that all that comes together in our separate. <laughs> all the other events that, it, that I participated in. <clears throat> so uh, I wish you all the very best. And you're always welcome to visit uh, Amravati in Hertfordshire in England. <laughs> and, uh, and I hope to be visiting Malaysia again sometime. <laughs> this is, I mean, an education is important because like, like Buddhism, Buddha Dhamma really has an important message, you know, for just developing good character in the world, you know, before you even think of becoming liberated from suffering. But it has, you know, it's structured in a way that has a very, you know, would be very important for young children and on up to to have something in a basis like that, to, to the kind of prime cultural conditioning, just the Dana Sila levels of, of uh, practice. And it also, you know, by doing good, refrain from doing bad, and five precepts and so forth, this all brings uh, happiness into our lives in, in, in a worldly, in a worldly context. And uh, I can see this, you know, how when, uh, in just the, the way of developing a sense of self-respect and, and, and respect for your own goodness and intentions in your life, we need to have things like dana, the generate, you know, the share, and Sila taking responsibility and 
to you know, these, these kind of adages that you get, do good, refrain from doing bad. And uh, these are very important to, to get in your early years as messages on, on uh, you know, ways to live your life, how to relate to others and, and the parents and the society. So I've noticed, I've always been a great admirer of uh, Chinese uh, culture. So I even studied it in uh, an undergraduate. <laughs> and the Confucianism and all the kind of uh, cultural background of, of uh, ancient, coming from ancient China. And of course, it, it, what always impressed me is the, is the kind of uh, refinement of it and the uh, sense of duty, responsibility and relationships uh, that were never part of my cultural background. And, uh, so I must have had some strong karmic connection of previous life experience with China. <laughs> because my, I, I remember as a small child in, in Seattle in the, in the 30s, you know, uh, we lived in a part of Seattle where there were, there were no Asians living, you know, so mainly my, you know, what I saw around me were middle class white people, that was it. But I always felt this uh, uh, strange attraction to Asian people. And when I uh, entered university in 1951, I, I entered the Far Eastern Institute in uh, at the University of Washington, which at that time was probably one of the best uh, places to study Chinese culture in the United States. And uh, over the years, this, this interest, this particular interest, at first it was as a child uh, toward China, because that's all I word that I heard. And then it, it, and, and when I encountered Buddhism, <clears throat> and in a way, you know, not, I'd heard of Buddhism before, but I'd never really given it much attention until uh, my, as I've been relating about me, encountering it in Japan, then that I knew was what why that particular tendency I had, what it was aiming for, because after that, that was my, that has been my main interest in life. And of course, it, uh, we all have to live and learn from our own lives and from, from the way we are as individuals, but uh, it also uh, learning how to live in society, how to um, you know, live in a way that, that we do uh, can live a blameless life and without fear and self disparagement. Because these are, with all the modern ideals of Western democracy, and uh, it doesn't create a sense of self respect. Uh, you know, you don't, uh, you don't, you don't really know who you are, but so you're always, you know, demanding things, things, you know, to try to think if you have everything that you want, then you will be okay, but that's not the case. Uh, so even in, uh, you know, I found in my own life in, uh, with Bokotra and Uborn, with <clears throat> where I gave up everything, just living in a little hat, on a, sleeping on a grass mat, it was, uh, in, a, in a rather, you know, in those days, Wat Wapong was had no technology advancements whatsoever, except the pulley on the well, and that, uh, and yet I found how, uh, you know, simple life could be, and uh, that my happiness then related to a change of attitude, not to increase the amount of comfort and convenience, uh, and that was quite an insight to realize this bhikkhu life, this monastic life, it does give us a chance to see, you know, that we don't have to dedicate our lives to always seeking security or material wealth, but it's, it's really developing the right attitude uh, and seeing things in, in terms of um, wisdom rather than through cultural biases or modern idealism or whatever, uh, you know, our basic conditioning uh, generates, we begin to transcend that and see things in terms of Dhamma.
So this also brings us into a universal relationship because this is a universal teaching, you know, for all human beings. Uh, this is a, this was a teaching that is appropriate for everyone, you know, and it's not uh, just for special people. And, and then it ranges on all level from generosity, dhamma, to sila and bhavana. So it has, it has a complete structure just for worldly happiness, self-respect, and then for developing uh, your wisdom faculties for liberation from all delusions. So I uh, uh, always feel a certain sadness and separating, but I do it so often that <laughs> coming, going, that's my life. <laughs> I express uh, my gratitude for the incredible hospitality uh, and for all of us, you know, that we've received here in uh, Kuala Lumpur and, uh, and then the, uh, uh, the interest and the, the generosity, everything has uh, been uh, more than one ever expected. So uh, this is something I, I leave Kuala Lumpur with very happy memories. Make, and happy memories then generate that uh, wish to come back. As Lung Pacha always says, the future is the unknown. <laughs> Years ago, when, when Lung Pacha came to, when we came to London the first time in 1977, it was in uh, Wesak celebration time in May, and so the head of the Buddhists, a very famous man, Christmas Humphreys, you know, who, who really uh, established the London Buddhist Society and has written books, came to pay respect to Ajahn Chah. And so then, um, and I was translating for him, and uh, we met in the Vihara, and then he said, you know, we're having this traditional Visaka celebration, uh, in this special place in London, and we would like uh, Ajahn Chah to be our honored guest. Will he accept? And so I, I translated that into Thai, and then Lung looks at Christmas Humphreys and says, My man, which means I, I don't know. <laughs> so, so then I said, Well, he, I, said, I told Christmas Humphreys, I said, I, He's not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, Christmas Humphreys looked a bit upset and uh, <laughs> bewildered by his answer. And then he, he, and he said, but he can certainly, you know, commit himself and say, you know, that he will come or he won't come. That's all I need to know. <laughs> and so I told Lung Po and Lung Po smiled and said, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't, wouldn't give in at all, you know. So he's my dad. That in Thai that means uncertain, you know. So um, anyway, Christmas Humphrey said, "Well, on the day, I'll send my driver with my car to pick you up." And so uh, the day came, and during this time, you know, Christmas Humphrey would phone or he'd get somebody to phone to me hard and say, "Is he going to come or not?" And we put you it was always my nag. <laughs> So the, the day came, the car came, the chauffeur came, and so I went back uh, where Ajahn Chah was staying in the Vihara. I said, I don't know why uh, the driver is here to take you to the Buddhist Society Wisak Day. And he said, oh, well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt if Christmas ever, Christmas Humphreys ever really understood it. <laughs> well, that's what you know. That's what people expect. I mean, that's a, that word in Thai, you know, my man sticks in your mind. And I, you know, even in England, I, I keep, you know, using the concept my man. <laughs> 
And it, uh, but it also is a great important Dhamma teaching because the future is unknown. It's my now. And so this is, uh, and this I think we need to have that, you know, because we, we are like in modern life in England is all the writing in your diaries, appointments, you know, <laughs> schedules and calendars and so forth. And you're kind of booked up. Like I, uh, several years ago, I just had to, uh, you know, uh, backing out or, or stop, uh, you know, using the my math type of answer because I was getting booked up years in advance. <laughs> it was like a slave to my diary. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I can't, I can't guarantee that I'll be even alive. And then, then uh, you know, then once you make the commitment, then you more, more or less have to keep it. Uh, and the society is one that wants certainty. Certitude is the great desire for everyone to be certain. And this uncertainty is. Um, it's really dumb, you know, at this moment, the way it is, is like this, and it, it's, it's not saying, defining it, telling you it's wonderful or horrible or whatever, it's just like this, and then, and then of course, conditions change in ways that we can't predict or be certain, so it's a, it's a very profound and uh, truthful answer. A way to respond by man.
Oh, this is uh, Ajahn Sumeto. Uh, I'm uh, arrived safely back at Amaravati in England, uh, and to say a few words of appreciation for um, the uh, hospitality and the interest that I experienced while I was in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur and Penang. And of course the Ajahn Chah day on the 16th of January was very inspiring to see so many people interested uh, <clears throat> in uh, my teachers who has passed away many years ago but whose uh, teaching still is uh, very clear and precise and, and he is even now more famous than he was when he was alive. Um, I really enjoyed the seeing the, the interest uh, that you all showed and the commitment and the eagerness to learn amongst the people that I met in Malaysia and this is something to uh, really uh, praise and encourage this interest because uh, it is a Buddhism is to me is is a teaching that really helps one to deal with the existence with the whole span of one's lifetime in which we have to deal with the uh, worldly dhammas, praise and blame, success, failure, happiness, suffering, uh, loss of loved ones, separation from the loved and so forth. So that this is a, the Buddha's teaching is, is to encourage us to pay attention to life and be awake and learn from it rather than uh, always trying to uh, escape suffering or blame it on so somebody or something else. Uh, this uh, practice that that I've been involved in for the past 43 years uh, has certainly paid off in my lifetime. Uh, what I've learned and, and uh, the result of my commitment to monastic life and uh, practicing uh, Buddhist meditation is is something that I am extremely uh, grateful for having such an opportunity and I do appreciate um, uh, Sian Ma's uh, interest in his uh, invitation for us to go to uh, Malaysia to share our knowledge with those who are interested. And so it was uh, something that I found great joy in and felt very inspired myself to see uh, the whole family, Sian's whole family, including his mother and sisters, brother and in-laws and nieces and so forth, all attending the retreat at the Genting Hills, uh, which was also a very memorable and pleasant uh, experience for me. The, the one thing that I can really share with, with all of you uh, is the, what I've learned from my life as a Buddhist monk uh, practicing in this tradition, in this way. Uh, of course, under the guidance, the first ten years was directly under the guidance of Ajahn Chah. And uh, so his influence is, in my life is, has been, uh, of, you know, the, probably the most significant person uh, that I've encountered in my lifetime. <clears throat> and so uh, his, uh, uh, the appreciation and respect that people are showing for him in Malaysia also uh, gives me great joy because uh, of all the people I've met in my life, uh, Ajahn Chah, I think, is, uh, you know, very unique and wise and uh, worthy of all the respect and praise that he is still receiving, even though he has uh, passed away many years ago. Uh, when I left Malaysia, I went to back to Thailand, where I had uh, the cataract surgery on both uh, eyes, which has been very successful, and uh, now I can see... Uh, better I can see without glasses you know quite clearly all I I need glasses for is for uh, reading a small print so this is quite uh, something 
uh, quite magnificent in itself, the modern medical procedures which can restore eyesight when you're 75 years old. Uh, so, uh, again I send you all my best wishes uh, and uh, my encouragement and respect for your interest and your commitment and for all the uh, organization, management and hard work that went in the, into arranging uh, the both the retreat uh, and the Ajahn Shah Day and also for those in Penang Larry Lim and, and people there that arranged for my very brief stay uh, in that beautiful place. And so I hope to have another opportunity to visit you all in Malaysia sometime in the future. Uh, and wish you all the very best.